it's Friday. We're back. It's what the fitness. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, follow the algorithm, and make sure to share the video. Helps us reach more people and get the message out there. This week, we have a short bit from 60 Minutes, who apparently feels the need to enter the realm of bull propagation. If you diet, mm -hmm. you lose weight, right? The number one cause of obesity is genetics. That means if you are born to parents that have obesity, you have a 50 to 85% likelihood of having the disease yourself, even with optimal diet. That is not true. So yes, if you're born to parents who have obesity, if both parents are obese, you have about an 80% likelihood of becoming obese yourself. But the rest of that stuff she said there, even if you have optimal diet, no, that's not true. And that's not what the research says. What that research suggests is there may be a genetic component, but also the environment you live in is likely suboptimal. If both parents are obese, their lifestyle habit choices are probably not conducive to a child growing up to be lean. Just like if you have abusive parents, it is much more likely that you will be an abuser yourself or seek out abusers as a life partner. Is it a genetic, you didn't suddenly just become genetically predisposed to being abused. That claim of hers is complete and utter nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And there's no data to back up what she just said about optimal diet and exercise and all that crap. Also, if it was genetics, our genetics didn't just change in 70 years. Obesity is a very recent problem. How do you account for the fact that obesity basically didn't hardly exist up until like the 1950s? It was like, I believe it was less than 5% of the population. Did we like have a quantum leap in genetics during that time? No, what happened was, what ha happened was if you look at the data, our energy consumption went way up and we started becoming less active. Oh my God, it's almost like people have said this before. Exercise, sleep management, stress management. So when people see families that have obesity, the assumption is, oh, what are they feeding those kids? So yeah, again, this is an example of someone taking half a truth. Yes, if you have one parent that's obese, I think you have like a 40, 50% chance of obesity. If you have two parents that are obese, it's about over an 80% chance of obesity. So that's the truth. And here's some lies. If you have optimal diet, you have optimal exercise, optimal sleep. Oh, stop it, stop it. Yes, all these people walking around, eating tons of fruits and vegetables, not overeating calories, exercising an hour a day, sleeping eight hours a night, and managing their stress, and just, you know, obese out of their minds. It's absolute buffoonery. This was part of a larger episode about new weight loss drugs that are GLP-1 mimetics, like semiglutide, liraglutide, that do show great promise for the treatment of obesity. Now here comes the part that this gal is not gonna wanna hear. Do you guys know how these drugs work to treat obesity? Does anyone know? Anybody? Ooh, Lane, me, I, I know. People eat less calories. They are extremely powerful appetite suppressants. So they cause about 15% weight loss on average, and they are very, very powerful appetite suppressants. They reduce people's energy intake. <gasps> but, but she just, hang on. She just said that with optimal diet, you know, you, you can't lose weight. But, but how does, what happened? What, how does that, I don't, cause she's pushing a narrative. Because we can't just have facts anymore. We have to have facts and twist them based around narratives. So there is a large group of people that basically want to say that obesity is of no fault of the individual and there's no individual responsibility. And then there are people who are on the other end who want to say obesity is 100% the fault of the individual and they're just lazy. The reality is it's somewhere in the middle, people. There are people that are absolutely more genetically prone to being obese. There are people who are born into families that have much worse habits and set them up for, you know, quote unquote failure in terms of becoming obese. Those things are true. What is also true is that when it comes to weight loss, there is individual responsibility. Now these drugs can help, absolutely. And I am not against using these drugs to treat obesity. 
I'm not against it. But at the end of the day, these drugs come with some risk. I think there's an elevated risk of thyroid cancer. Who knows if it's a causative thing? We have to see more. And you'll have to stay on them because if you stop taking them, your appetite will likely come back. So again, it's a choice. Now, can you lose that weight through calorie restriction? Yes, actually you're losing it through calorie restriction even with these drugs. But can you lose it without these drugs? Yes, you can. But it will be because you change your lifestyle habits to set you up to consume less energy and hopefully do more exercise as well. I'm sorry that some of these facts are incongruent with your feelings, but data is more important than your feelings. And I would just ask that we get these stupid narratives out of this stuff so that people can actually get good information to make informed decisions. If that's lifestyle, exercise, drugs, whatever it is, I'm just asking that we be honest about this stuff. But instead, we have people like this professor or whoever it is, I'm not familiar with her, pushing a narrative that obesity is just, a, is just caused by genetics. That is false. All right, hope you guys liked the video. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.